So I've been looking a long time for my version of the perfect survival knife and I'm super excited. I think I've finally found it. So stick around and I'm going to show you the knife that I came up with. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about the journey to getting here. To me, a survival knife is a knife that's not necessarily a great bushcraft knife. It's not necessarily a great skinning knife, a great hunting knife, a great fighting knife. To me, what a survival knife is, is a knife that pulls together elements that allow it to perform adequately at all those things. So to me, a survival knife is kind of that knife that if you had one knife to grab and you were walking off the grid, or if you were gonna carry one knife and you weren't sure what kind of a situation you would be in, that survival knife is sort of the jack of all trades. So one attribute above all else in my mind that a survival knife has to possess is it has to possess durability and simplicity of design. So after years and years of using all these different knives and never coming across quite exactly what I wanted, I finally decided, you know what, I'm just gonna build my own. So about two years ago, I contacted the first knife maker and I worked with them for about two to three months and it just wasn't come, coming together. They kept wanting to do fancy things and wanting to add more and more features to it. So fast forward to about three months ago, four months ago, and I bumped into a guy on Instagram, Chad with CK Knife and Tool. I reached out, shot a message to him. <clears throat> he messaged me, we went back and forth and I kind of threw the idea out there of, hey, what would you think about designing a survival knife for me? Well, to make a long story short, life happened and it took us a couple of months to come together. But about a month or two ago, we finally started getting serious about designing something. We spent a lot of time together. He sent some drawings back and forth. But the thing about Chad is I could tell that he got what I was looking for. So if any of you guys have watched my channel for very long, you know when it comes to outdoors gear, my basic philosophy is keeping it simple. And then whenever possible, I want gear that's overbuilt. It's invariably almost always better to have gear that's overbuilt than underbuilt. So Chad and I went back and forth, and I am so excited to tell you guys after a couple months, I now have had the Coyote Works Ultimate Survival Knife in my hand for about three weeks now. So let me talk to you guys about this knife a little bit. The first thing is, it is a little bit on the larger side. The blade's just a little bit over five inches. The second thing is, it's pretty beefy. You can go on Chad's website, ckknifeandtool.com, and you can find all the specs on it. But it's pretty thick. The second thing about it is, it's very, very simple. Basically, there's only a couple of parts in this whole knife. Nothing fancy. Another thing is, this was something that I really found that I liked over the years in a multi-purpose knife, was this kind of modified broomstick style handle. Now, a lot of knife makers put finger grooves and a lot, of, um, a lot of contours in the handle. And all those things can really help make the knife very comfortable in one particular position in the hand. But in my experience, the more contours, the more different contours that you incorporate into the handle, the more likelihood there is that it becomes uncomfortable under sustained use when you're not using it for a very specific chore. So, modified broomstick handle, good size blade, beefy knife. Something else that was really high on my list is I actually really like a flat grind. So I had Chad do this knife in a flat grind. Now, a lot of you bushcraft guys and everything are <clears throat> just gonna fall out of your chairs because I didn't do a Scandi grind. But my philosophy on a flat grind is, is that that gives me the deepest bite when I'm chopping. That's one of the things that makes it a really efficient chopper. And also, because it's a camp knife, that's really good for slicing. More importantly than the features that this knife has, I think, are the features that it doesn't have, right? No jimping on the back of the blade, no finger choil cut into the blade. I want to be able to choke up as close to my cutting edge as I can for all of that fine carving stuff. So this handle gives me the ability to do that. 
Another thing is a fairly large handle. I want lots of room so when I'm gripping the knife, you can see handle material sticking out the other side. I wanted a really sharp spine on this knife too. Number one, for striking a ferro rod, but also for shaving fine carvings off of small twigs and branches. A lot of times out here, this is a real handy way to get tinder or even polish the point on something. And this spine on here is sharp enough that I can use it from any angle to shave off of a branch. This modified broom handle with a little bit wider end. So see how it gets wider out here at the end? That's so I can choke up on it and chop with this knife. That gives me that ability to let the weight of the blade do the work in chopping. So this is a hell of a robust knife. I've been using it for about three weeks now, like I said, and in that three weeks, I've done pretty much everything there is to do with a knife out here. I've batoned wood, I've modified an old rusty tin can that I found with it to make a candle holder. I've cut shavings with it. I've worked a fire steel with it. I've pried with it. There's good point strength for prying. One thing that was really important to me was this nice belly in the blade, right? And since it's a nice wide blade, I can choke up on it with my fingers and use that blade tip for skinning or fleshing. I don't have a rabbit here that I can show you guys how to skin, but, but that's the whole point of this big belly to the blade right there is for skinning and fleshing. So let's talk a little bit about the sheath. So the sheath is a really simple um, two pieces of Kydex sandwiched together, rivets all around it, and a tech lock on the back. So. Again, everything I need, nothing I don't. I like to keep my sheath simple. I like Kydex, it's a good material that performs well in all different weather conditions. And I like the single tech lock on the back. That gives me the option. I like to carry my knife horizontally across my belly, I call it belly carry. It doesn't get in, a, in the way there. When I bend down, when I sit, I can get my knife from any position really easily. And it's just always nice and out of the way. When the sheath comes, the tech lock's mounted for vertical carry like a normal knife. But because of the way the holes are set up on here, you can flip it. So that's the Coyote Works Ultimate Survival Knife. If you guys are interested in one, they are available through Chad at CK Knife and Tool. You can go to his website or to his YouTube channel. If you guys are interested in learning more of the technical details about it, you can go there. For me personally, I just know it works, and that's the most important thing to me are the features, the things I like about it, and that it works. But I'm super stoked, man. It's been a long time coming, and I just feel like this is, this is my knife now. This has got everything that I want and nothing that I don't on it. If you guys are interested in owning one of these knives, you can hit up Chad at CK Knife and Tool. He's got a website, CK Knife and Tool with and spelled out, dot com or his YouTube channel, CK Knife and Tool. As always, I appreciate your support. Hit me up with any comments or questions below. I'll catch you guys on the next adventure. Coyote Works out.